welcome back to another episode from Arconsys with a server performance benchmark implementation in Swift using Hummingbird and the argument puzzle from Apple. Last time I gave you a little introduction into what the project is actually about, uh, what kind of frameworks I will use. I was talking about Hummingbird and uh, Argument Parser. And today we're finally getting into the code and yeah, just setting up the project, basically setting up all the, all the package.swift file for our project. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so pretty simple, nothing in it. Um, I did already create all the files, but as you can see, they're all empty. There's nothing in it except for the main part, which we'll come to later, but all those are empty. Okay, let's get started. We're using Swift 5.10. Hopefully soon we'll use Swift 6. And with that, we will, um, I will let you know a little secret or at least something that I always come across and which uh, makes you kind of mad. Xcode is a little bit particular on how to use the argument parser when you use it. So the first thing I want you to, to remember is to define your platform. So for this, I will use the very common macOS v14. Okay. One reason for this is if you don't define this in Xcode or in the project, then the argument parser later on will not use the async function by default because it tries to use the lowest version and there's no async await in it. So then we will run into some problems. For now, just stick with me. You need it. Even though we're not running this on a macOS system later, we're running it in Linux, but for Xcode to work properly, we have to define it right here. Okay. So you should probably already be familiar with the structure right here. There's one thing I really like to have, and that is to get all the dependencies out of the way somewhere else and not pollute the whole structure, uh, the, the whole thing right here. So with that, I always start by creating a few extension. I will do this for the first one so that you can see what we actually, what I want to achieve. And then I will just copy paste the rest because it's basically copy and pasting. Okay, so we need an extension on the package and those dependencies. So to make it as easy as possible, I'm just gonna define a static function that will use the name of the package I want to use. This one will be the argument parser and this one will return a package.dependency. Okay, so package, dependency, package URL from. Okay. You can, of course, copy paste those URLs because who knows them by heart. And the version is actually pretty simple. I'm going to use everything above 1.3.1. Okay, so this dependency goes right in here. It's pretty simple. Oops, argument parser, okay. This is where you have to declare what kind of dependency, third party dependencies you will actually need. And later on you can use something similar down below. Okay, the second extension I want to use is an extension on the package, the package description target dependency. Okay, and here I basically do the same thing because I like the name. I'm gonna create a static function, argument, parser, and this time I'm going to return a package description target dependency. Okay. Package, description, target, dependency, 
product name and package. Okay. So I already know that this is my package. Going to use this right here. And the name somehow is not always as simple to find, but you will get used to it. This time it's going to be argument parser. Okay. And to demonstrate what we actually can use, how we can use this one, I'm just going to create our first target. And this is just going to be one of the smallest targets we have. This is going to be the executable, executable target. This one will have a name, let's call it executable. And it, of course, will have some dependencies. And since I like to organize it a little better, I also have a custom path, which will be sources executable. OK, so pretty easy to use. The same thing, I'm just going to copy and paste this one and put it in here. Now, as you can see, as, you, as it's highlighted, this one will actually use the package description target dependency. And this one will use the package dependency. But it's the same name, so it's pretty easy to see, hey, this one will define where you can get it, and this one will actually define what you use it. OK. Since you can see, this one is executable. Just going to collapse all those so that we can see what kind of targets we will have. Um, okay, let's get the other dependencies in here as well. So this is going to be copy pasting from my template project and actually not that big, just not feeling like you have to get through everything as I type it. So let's shortly talk about it. Argument parser is basically our interface we're using to get things into our executable, like some arguments or whatever. Hummingbird is actually the framework we're using. So this is the server side part. Then we have Fluent, which is an ORM to work with the database itself. Then we have two kind of drivers. We have one, the Postgres driver. This will be used in production because there we will have a Postgres database somewhere hosted and all the work we do will be on that database. But for testing and locally and now set up, we will use an SQL driver, which has a nice option to be in memory. So we don't have to do anything fancy. Just say, hey, in memory, it's going to be an SQL database. Go. And for that, that's the only reason I need the SQL driver. All right, perfect. So analog to those, I, of course, also need the package description target dependencies. Just copy paste them. This is going to be Hummingbird, Fluent, Postgres, and Postgres driver and the SQL driver. All right. So since we can't only live by one target, we need some more to make it a little bit more structured. OK, so the next target in our list you can see on the left side is going to be app. This is going to be a simple target name app. This will, of course, also have dependencies. We'll define those later. And it will have a custom path, which will be sources app. OK, what kind of dependencies do we need here? Our app, of course, needs Hummingbird. So oh, let's just add all our dependencies we need up here. There you go. Argument parser, Hummingbird, Fluent, Postgres, and SQLite. And in here, we basically need Hummingbird. We'll also need Fluent. We'll also need the post 
Quest driver and therefore, of course, also the SQLite driver. And I think that's it for now. Those are all those third party dependencies we need. So the executable will actually only use argument parser to get all the stuff in order and then we'll pass our arguments along to the app, which will actually build the whole structure for our server side application. Okay, so next target. This is going to be simple target and I'm gonna skip common because that's a different thing, but I'm going to go right to domain. This one of course has dependencies. And it will, of course, also have custom path. Okay, let's see. What kind of dependencies does the domain need? This one, I believe, only needs Hummingbird. Okay. Then next target will be our service. course we need dependencies and we need a custom path let's see what kind of dependencies does sources service need service or oh, just needs fluent because this one is actually going to work with the database and that I have executable app domain service, executable app domain services. Last one will be common. So common, most likely you will have something similar to this in your own project, because this is basically all the extensions or whatever you need, helpers, some, something that can does not have any dependencies, but can still be imported to any other target and this one will have of course a custom path like that okay let's run it and as you can see on the left side all the dependencies will be downloaded perfect we can close this now so okay so now those are going, all going to be targets right now that only depend on third-party dependencies and not our own targets. So let's add those targets. Okay. The executable will actually use our app. Then the app will actually use everything that is below it. So that will be target. Let's see, first one will be domain. then service and i believe i also need common in here okay perfect then for domain i basically only need the level below it which is service and service doesn't really have anything and common of course should not have anything okay Looks good, perfect. That's it already. So 48 lines to define our whole project and plus a few lines to get the extension out of the way. And with that, we are done with our project setup. And next up comes the part where we create the model. Okay, I hope you had fun and see you next time.